This week, when is a battery dead on an RV? RV batteries die. It happens. And the worst thing you can hear when getting ready to leave on a trip is this. It's not starting. There's not enough power in the batteries to start that big diesel motor. The diesel motor in pusher motorhomes needs two good 12 volt chassis batteries to be able to start. They need to be maintained just as much as the house batteries do. Watch to the end of this video for some tips on removing a battery from a tight spot. There's a statistic on batteries that says 85% of the wet lead acid batteries die because they weren't properly maintained. This can be a problem on RVs because while there are monitors for the house batteries, that's only part of knowing what's happening with them. And the chassis or starter batteries have even less monitoring information. And when they're out of sight, they're out of mind. Regular maintenance on your batteries will make them last three to five times longer or more. So let's talk reality now. We've all forgotten to even look at the batteries, let alone maintain them at some time. We hear the click, click, click of the starter motor and nothing. And then we remember, oh, I haven't checked those batteries. Even the auxiliary start button won't fire up the motor. Now we're forced to do the maintenance that we've forgotten to do. But now there's pressure to get it done. So the first thing to do is clean the batteries off with water. This prevents contamination of the batteries as we open them up and do the maintenance that we need to do. Once the batteries are clean, we put a portable charger on the chassis batteries to see if they'll even take a charge. Then we direct our attention to the house batteries. Now these batteries are each six volts and have caps on them that allow for regular inspections. A phone's camera with flash can really help in inspecting the batteries. And as we can see, these batteries haven't had those regular inspections. They're dry. The electrolyte that should be within one eighth of an inch of the bottom of those tubes is nowhere to be seen. Are these batteries gone? Dead? Toast? Well, not necessarily. They have been damaged to some degree, but the only way to tell is to fill them back up with stilled water and test them. The four house batteries that are in this bay needed three and a half gallons of water to bring them back up to full. Now, what happened to this water? Well, it had been boiled off by charging. Now, as to the condition of these batteries, well, time will tell how much damage was done. But for now, they're all working at from 6.2 to 6.3 volts. And with proper care, they may last years. Or they may stop working in a month. It's hard to tell until they've seen a full charge. Now, there are ways of reconditioning batteries that will bring them back to near new condition. But I'm not gonna address those in this video. If we get 200 likes for this video, We'll do another video on that process by itself. Now that we've serviced the house batteries, the chassis batteries have had a couple of hours to charge. Now these batteries have the misleading designation of maintenance free. All wet lead acid batteries should see regular maintenance. And those caps that are on there do come off with some effort. And as we can see here, it's dry as well. Well, water is cheap, so filling the cells back up may help, or may not. Well, what did we find? Both chassis batteries tested out as having 12 volts. And this is after charging. They should have been up around 13 volts each. I put a battery load tester on each battery, and both failed. The one in the middle of the rack, under load, showed zero volts while the other one had only eight volts while under load. So they were dead and mostly dead. 
The other test that I could have done is with a hydrometer to measure the acid level in the electrolyte. This requires a full charge on the battery being tested. In this case, the house batteries weren't ready for that test and the chassis batteries, well, they'd already failed. So it's time to replace the chassis batteries. Now, removing a battery from any vehicle can be a real pain. If the battery's in a box, it's more so. These batteries are very heavy. And in this case, they don't have any handles. But with a length of strap, I can make a handle that allows it to come out without much pain. The way I do it is to tie a loop on one end of the strap if it doesn't already have one. I wrap the strap around the battery and pass the loose end through the loop. I pull it tight with the loop at the middle of the battery and use the loose end as a handle to lift the battery out of the box. This works on most batteries, but you have to have access to the top of it to wrap the strap around the battery. For very deep boxes, the strap can sometimes be wrapped around the terminals and then lift the battery out. Or, in cases like this, the strap can be used to form a handle using those lift points that some batteries have molded into the top. So that is how we determine if a battery is really dead or can be saved. If you have any questions about RV living or suggestions for topics for videos, leave a comment below. We do videos every week and we appreciate hearing from our viewers, letting us know what you would like to see. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.